Hello, hello everybody, it's Stippling Vaughn, and you can see I got some work done here on this Wraith of God piece, and this is for Aaron Lepresti's Wraith of God Blood Hunters Art Contest. You can see where I got a lot of work done on it. I got her work done big time. <clears throat> I uh, spent a lot of time with uh, her hands, getting them done, and then I'm working at home or up here, I'm going to have the Wraith over here. He's going to be falling off the edge of a cliff. I'm going to have him shooting some uh, some uh, werewolves. Now, right now, I'm working the werewolves up, and they're pretty big. All I'll do them is I'll shrink them down, light box them in, so that way I can have, so that way, it's, it's, it's not easy for me to work them small, so I'll work them up big, shrink them down just like that size, but you have all the motion, and they won't look stiff. Um, right now I'm working on one. In fact, let me uh, get it out so you can see it. It is right here. You can see how I'm working it and how he's pretty big. And what I'm doing is I'm really getting with the anim trying to animate him like an animation cell with a push and pull on him. Arms are kind of stiff, but you see how the body's got that arc. And right now I'm, where I'm focusing on trying to fix is how to get that head in. If it was a normal head, you can fake it, but because it's a wolf's head, that's where I'm having issue with pushing it. And I'm, it, you, I'm gonna have it, so your head's here, but am I gonna need to have the, uh, let me get a pencil, so you can see. Okay, so the head's here, okay? And if it was a regular person, you could just have the head flung back, and like the chin here, and all ears here. But because this is a wolf, okay, he's going to have the snout, which means it's going to come out about here, okay. And because it's a wolf's head, it looks weird. So I've got to push, what I've got to do is I've got to take this, instead of having the head going that way, I've got to have the head going more that way with the snout not being so predominant. And where I'm going to have to... What I'll do is I'll just really work with the foreshortening of the head. We'll have the ears coming down. Okay, and you can see right away how it looks kind of wonky and funky. So it's uh, the, the that's where the challenge is right there. And then what I'll do is I'll just have like a blood swatch here and have like a blood trail because he's been shot in the head. Maybe have another uh, blood. Uh, blood streak coming from his chest also but you can see how I'm working on this and what I'll do then is I'll once I have it I'll put it throw it into the uh, into the uh, photocopier shrink it down so that way he's that big there okay but then he's only going to be about yay big okay when I shrink him down so that's another thing also to keep in mind is that when you're working on this, it may look wonky, but when you shrink it down, you can hide, you'll can you be hiding some of those mistakes and the fact that it's so small. So just something, just show you some progress from the pencils and how it's going. Um, this week, for me, with streamers, uh, it was a big week. And the reason why it was a big week is uh, Sean Arnett is back. Uh, he took time off for a while. Uh, to take care of his mother, uh, she passed away, and uh, he is uh, had to take some time off to take care of that. That's when CG uh, really showed his unity and strength by uh, having that art option uh, to raise money uh, for the medical bills that had accrued uh, with his mother with hospice, and it really made me proud seeing how everybody uh, really bound together to uh, support Sean with raising money for him. And uh, it, like I said, it's it was a hell of a lot better than just putting out a GoFundMe and seeing uh, and hoping and like e-begging people to, uh, rate, to uh, donate money. Uh, having the art auction for comic books and artwork was a really good thing. It was a great thing that gave something to the people who were 
uh, wanting to support him, and they got something out of it. So that's the reason why I really like Comics Gate. Comics Gate doesn't ask for money. Comics Gate bounds, binds together, and you get something out of it with uh, when someone asks for assistance, whether it be in sales or uh, getting a product out of uh, what they're asking for the help, which is more so than uh, a lot of other artists uh, do when they have medical bills and just basically, come on, I'm putting out a GoFundMe to help me. No, I mean, they're actually saying, hey, I'm, I need some help. Uh, if, you don't, if you donate to my cause, you'll get this in, re- in return from me. And uh, with the utmost uh, thank you. So, but Sean was back, and man, oh man, Sean was back with a vengeance right off the bat. Dr- Custom like the Jersey boy he is, um, and his and that's one thing I really CG for me has been kind of quiet without him because he has that thick Jersey accent. Cuss is like a sailor. Uh, and, and the cursing that he does is, is typical of, a, of someone from Jersey, uh, specifically North Jersey, so it's really great to have him back. And uh, can't wait for uh, Ott and stuff to return to its uh, same old ways of joking around and just having fun. That's a lot of the main thing that I really like about uh, CG is it's not about if if you go if you're watching CG shows for uh, the the oppression of council cult, council culture and all that stuff that's what you're going to get out of it. But there's a lot of people that are in CG just for fun, and if you follow those guys, you're going to walk away after seeing one of their shows happy and invigorated for comics and you're supporting independent creators and you're basically uh, reliving what made you love comics and it's just really I just that's the reason why I like Comics Gate isn't because of the whole political stuff I mean some of the stuff, political stuff is great because it brings awareness to what's going on I'm like hey this is what you guys are doing and this is why this stuff sucks but these guys, they don't lament on what currently sucks. They go, they focus on what's great about comics and what was great on comic books. And they're taking that to feed their enthusiasm with projects that they're creating now. So, uh, it's, and it, I, Sean is just a uh, great voice in art and stuff. And it's glad to have him back. Art and stuff's back to which, the way it is and the way it should be. So, Sean, welcome back. You were missed greatly, and uh, keep up the good work. Keep fighting. Keep entertaining us with uh, reminding us of uh, when comic books were fun, and reminding us how comic books can still be fun. <laughs> I might apologize for the cough. Um, big big announcement. Uh, is uh, Nick Ricada, okay, the YouTube lawyer who basically just cracks jokes and uh, where he really, where I discovered him was when he started streaming court cases and critiquing them in real time. And with doing that, he's really pulled the, pulled back that veil, showing how the media. Uh, tells the story that they want to tell and facts be damned and uh, how you're mani- how they manipulate what's actually happening to support their narrative but when you get into a court of law court of law tells a completely different story and basically exposes uh, the, na- the, the, the lies for what they are and uh, the biggest was of course Kyle Rittenhouse trial and with the Kyle Rittenhouse trial it really showed that uh, whether you agree with what he did or not it's about whether he it's not about whether he put himself in that situation it was about it really came down to it was the second amendment under uh, 
under on trial and not Kyle himself. Uh, it became evidently clear in how the media completely warped the facts and uh, completely lied and distorted the facts. And uh, Nick helped bring that to light. Well, Nick has been trying to get Kyle on for almost a year now. Well, on the 22nd of September, uh, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time, Nick Ricada will have an interview with Kyle Rittenhouse. He's been trying to get this for over a year. Apparently, Kyle surrounded himself with people that were uh, very selective with who he spoke to, not for Kyle's benefit, but for their benefit. Apparently, Kyle no longer has those people in his life, and so he that gave Nick the ability to speak to Kyle and get him on his show. Uh, like I said, I still remember watching that case and how uh, we that's how we're a little binger, little finger, little binger. Uh, how he was uh, the state's prosecutor. And how he was like, A, trying to violate Kyle's rights and was basically just being completely dismissive of the court and of the, uh, of the court of law and the judge and how Nick Ricada calling that stuff out and then be like, yes, judge, that's exactly right. And how like, basically explaining to us in real time what the prosecutor was doing and what the judge was doing in response, how the judge should have done more in this situation, the judge did less, and how uh, Kyle's lawyers, what they did to, uh, to what they did right, and how like, I, I still remember, <laughs> I still remember watching that case and how... Nick Ricada was like yelling to about to uh, Kyle's lawyers, object, 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 object. And here's someone in the in the, the chat, or no, it wasn't someone in the chat. Someone had, was actually in the courtroom and tweeted out that the juror had noped out at this point. And so at that point, Nick Ricada underst- and someone told Nick Ricada this. So Nick Ricada understood the reason why Kyle's lawyers were not objecting is because the last thing they want is to make the jury start paying attention to what's going on. And so it's basically like, let Binger do what he's doing. Don't object. And the reason why you don't want to object is because the the jurors have noped out and they're not paying attention at all. So just let them keep going. Uh, You've prepped Kyle for this so Kyle's ready for it and it was really a great education on our legal system and how lawyers have to have a certain strategy Uh, and it's from his coverage of Kyle is truly one of the reasons why him Emily D. Baker, Joe Logic, and actually I didn't know who Joe Logic was. Uh, Good Logic is his channel on YouTube, but I st- that, he was one of my standouts from the cases from when he would show up on Nick's uh, channel, and uh, how he was uh, commenting on what's going on, and uh, I still remember when they uh, came back with a verdict. Uh, Joe, Joe was like, yes, 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 yes. So enthusiastic when they were reading back those uh, not guilty counts. I mean, me, myself, I was like watching Kyle and how he was just like, how he's just standing there and how like slowly, slowly the realization as the counts were coming back of not guilty, how he was realizing that he'd won, that he'd gotten his life back and just, but for me, it was like I was focusing on Kyle, 
but all I could hear was Joe going, yes, 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 he's got his life back, yes. And it's because of that case that so many lawyers were streaming the Amber Heard Johnny Depp case. And that, again, is another example of where the media was stringing a web of lies, based a web of their narrative based on lies, and how, and again, it was great because when that case started, there were so many lawyers at the beginning of that case going, nope, he's, Johnny Depp can't win this case. It's nice, the way, I, I see what's going on, it's, they're doing, pulling a good strategy, but he can't win this case. I, this case, from what I can see, is this is him winning back uh, his career in the court of public opinion. He's not going to be able to win this case. Okay? And it was amazing how many of these lawyers were steadfast, going, oh, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if he won, but he can't win this case. Uh, Nate and Kurt were two of the standouts from that case who were flat out going, yeah, I know what you're saying, but he's not going to win this case. He can't. He can't win this case. He's, it's too stacked against him. And to listen to them as the court case went on and to see how their opinion of what was happening, how like he's got a great better shot, he's got a better shot than when this case started. And it was really interesting. And that's where we really, I found so much interest in watching these live streams to A, see how these some lawyers are so slimy and how they uh, really try to bend and manipulate the law but then in the end it doesn't win out and they don't and the, and the judge can see through it and or how the jury then sees through it and I really do enjoy watching these uh, court cases live Nick has done a great job with it. I think Nick needs to be doing more. There's a case starting soon, a, law, a case, a court case starting soon. It's in Albadeen, Texas. It's a shooting. And the shooting is self-defense. Uh, and it's one of those where like you look at the video of what happened. It's like, who is in the wrong? Who is in the right? It's really hard to say. And you, you don't necessarily take sides. But this is what makes the law case and the court of law curious to see how the case is presented, what facts and information we brought forward that will sway your opinion based on the law. It's one of those where it's like, yeah, that's a real slimy thing that person did, but they didn't break the law. And that's the other thing also is that when you have a cross-examination, and the defend or and the and the witness on the stand has really won you over with uh, their testimony, but then the uh, cross examination, the other side gets to do their examination, and how they might just rip down that person, and it seems like they're being so aggressive and so slimy, but then to hear these lawyers flat out go, no, no, no. This is exactly what they were hired. This is what exactly what this lawyer is supposed to be doing. You cannot fault at this lawyer at all for what they're doing, for what they're saying. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Do, and they like they'll, they'll like they'll like they'll like they'll like inform and sometimes even chastise the chat if the chat's being like, oh, this guy's such a you know, like, no 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 no. This guy, this lawyer is not a scumbag. This lawyer is not. A, he's not trying to manipulate anything. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. And you can't fault him for doing what he's supposed to be doing. It's another thing where it's like, even with that Daryl Brooks trial, it's one of those where it's like, there are so many times where it's like, and I still am of the belief of that judge was way too lenient on, on, on uh, Brooks. And he really, and she, there are times, so many times she should have been like, nope, nope, okay, you... I don't have to repeat this. I don't have to repeat the ruling and the reasoning again. I have already. It's already on the record. Goodbye. Go to the other room. And I just. She was way too lean with Daryl Brooks. 
even though we all knew that Daryl Brooks was was guilty and he was making such a mockery of the court proceedings, uh, she was way too lenient, in my opinion, and and we still would have come back with a guilty verdict. So, but no, Nick Ricada is going to have Kyle Rittenhouse on on Tuesday on the 24th. I can't wait to see it, and I hope you guys will all tune in. Even if you disagree with the court case, okay, the important thing is you have to understand is that this case, not even if you are anti-gun, okay, it's important to you to understand why we have that Second Amendment, okay, and why it's so important for us to be able to have the right to bear arms. Not just is the fact that why do we have the right to bear arms based on uh, the oppression that was coming towards us from the British, which caused us to form our own nation, but moving forward, okay? Love it or hate it, one of the things you have to, one of the reasons why the Second Amendment is so important, okay, is war colleges of not just our country, but other countries, Okay. They've done war games of what would happen if another country were to invade the United States. Okay. And they all come back to the same conclusion that the United States cannot be effectively invaded with enemy troops on our soil because of the Second Amendment. Because if, the, if our country were invaded and troops from an opposing country set foot on our soil, okay? The Second Amendment is there to provide defense, not just to the individual, but for the country itself. And that's one thing you have to understand and you have to respect. You, Like I said, you can be the biggest anti-gun person in the world, but that law is there for your protection, even if you don't take advantage of that law. Okay, I don't own a single gun. I never have owned a gun. I don't see the need for me to own a gun. Okay, But I do know that it's important. I'm glad we have it. And most importantly, because of laws like Castle Doctrine, okay, if someone were to break into my house, yes, I'd be on the phone with 911. Okay? Notifying the police that someone's breaking into my house. My girlfriend, on the other hand, she'd be yelling out, clear as day for the person who's, who's uninvited in our home, that we have guns, and she is prepared to use them. Okay? And if you don't believe me, go ahead and try. Because I'll tell you right now, you will not leave the house alive if you were to, come, if you were to invade our house. We have guns. He, like I said, even though I've never had the need to shoot a gun since I was a kid, I know that I am safe because we have them. We don't, we don't have them out waving them around. They are kept locked up and secure, but they are there. And we have them because of the Second Amendment. So like I said, Please tune in or on the 2nd of, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the 24th of January. It's a Tuesday for this interview. I can't wait for it, and I'm really curious. I hope Kyle uh, acknowledges uh, the importance that Nick Ricada has had to the case that he was involved in and how important uh, Nick was to help bringing to light for the average person like myself the importance of that case and the importance of Kyle being found not guilty. Okay? Remember, we live in a stressful world, everybody. And that's the reason why, like me, just calm down, take it all one dot at a time.